Hello, hockey, basketball, and soccer fans. My name is David. Thought I would uh, start this video at 3:09 on the morning of Thursday, 9th of November, 2023, North American Eastern Time. Very pleased that the Raptors ended up beating the Dallas Mavs by a country mile in that road game, going two for Texas. Very, very good. Weekend game, Eastern Time, Saturday, in Boston against the local Celtics squad. By no means are the Raptors a playoff team. It may not even be the Raptors who get into a playing into a playing spot. That being said, the Raptors look a lot better in their game, look better during their road trip in Texas and the Leafs at home. I'm gonna we'll get to that in a moment. But make no mistake, there are a lot of issues with the Leafs. I, was, I found a video posted by the Hot Take Hockey YouTube man. A fan of the Leafs about uh, about uh, defenseman John Klingberg acquired last offseason via free agency, having been quote a joke unquote. Sam McKee and J.D. Bunkus, co-hosts of the most recent Leafs Talk post-game show on Sportsnet 590 The Fan, including a video on the Sportsnet YouTube channel claimed that Klingberg had been unplayable. There's no question. It's time for the Leafs to waive John Klingberg. Earlier this week, Oilers GM Ken Holland showed a lot of courage by putting Jack Campbell, who that GM had signed to a, to a five-season, 25 million US dollar contract on waivers. Is it any surprise that not one non-Oilers NHL team picked Campbell's contract up. Yes, yeah, a flat cap, but even if it hadn't been, who knows? It may just be that you no know, value for money. We don't want him. We don't want him without salary, without retention of of uh, cap pit. It's going to be interesting to find out what happens. Campbell's now with the Bakersfield Condors. It's hard to believe. It's been so long. There was this video that I, this short video that I viewed, posted on the Sportsnet YouTube page in the shorts section of a, well, what appeared to be a young woman and a male colleague named Anthony who had uh, gone down to Rogers Place, home of the others, and WHL's Oil King to do some interviews. And, and you know, everyone has been looking rather chill it was, a, it was a big win over time back in L.A. and back at the Stable Center against the Kings. Hard to believe what time has flown, has flown, flown by so quickly. And, and I want to reiterate the one thing there. The Oilers won that series because the Kings were not very good defensive team. Remarkable, isn't it? Look at where the you know look at where the Oilers are now. Close to the bottom, needing a win of a Thursday Eastern Time, a game that starts on Thursday Eastern Time, in San Jose against local Sharks squad. Yeah, I understand that the Sharks have played more games, and winning and beating the Oilers in regulation will mean a tie on points. But the Oilers will own the tiebreaker for for the time for the then the time being if that happens on games played, fewer games played. Yet the symbolism cannot, you know, will be hard to ignore of a win of any type by the, by the Sharks. Sharks end up being the Flyers barely, was in regulation 2-1, but I think it's just too late to save the Sharks season. Sharks are probably going to be, I don't know, bottom five in the NHL on points. Even if they don't end up getting the first overall pick, I'm just hoping that if the Leafs don't get that first overall pick, you know, another original six team does not get a first overall pick either. Of original six teams that are, you know, as of the standings on, uh, uh, you know, as of the games that start on Wednesday Eastern Time, among original six teams, the Bruins. Are comfortably in first in their own, in the Atlantic Division. Rangers 
or at least in terms of you know above you know in terms of above the fourth place team in the Atlantic six points up on the wings was rather impressive five you know ten one one and oh win regulation loss OT loss to a loss record Ranger New York Rangers have a record of nine two oh and one at draw games so yeah so those are two original six teams that are inside that are inside playoff spots the wings and leafs own the wild card spots 15 for the you know after 13 games played by each of the wings and leafs wings have 15 points leafs 14. the habs have 12. and that's it for the original 16 for original 16 that are based in eastern conference not sure how the Habs are going to do but it's not looking good for first overall pick for really any of the original six teams that are based in the Eastern Conference. Go to the Western Conference, so let's see here. Alright, so we have okay, so we have Wings, Leafs, Habs, Bruins, Rangers. Okay, so the Blackhawks still may end up getting a first overall pick. I'm really hopeful that a non original six team gets a first overall draft pick if the Leafs don't. But yeah, it's going to be rather important. I see in terms of team, Canadian team head coaches, the jobs of DJ Smith. They'll get no particular order of uh, of hotness of seats. Uh, the catch of coaching jobs of DJ Smith of the Sands, Sheldon Keefe of the Leafs, and Jay Wood Croft of the, uh, Croft of the Oilers as well precarious in terms of job security. Uh, in terms of GMs, there are only two that, uh, you know, two uh, who their, whose respective Canadian teams hired them before the 2019 NHL interdraft. They are Ken Holland of the Others and Kevin Sheffield Day off of the Jets. So it's going to be very interesting what happens on Thursday Eastern Time. So on Thursday, we have the Canucks. Will the Canucks in a an away game against the Sens? Habs will be uh, playing uh, to the southwest in Michigan against the Wings. So we'll turn a little bit later. Have the Jets hosting the Preds. Eight Eastern time start. The others, yes, in an away game against the Saturday Sharks. I mean, we're all doing lots of channel flipping, but definitely it's going to be very interesting Thursday. So, so we have the Canuck Sens, Habs, Jets, and Oilers in action. Flames and Leafs will be playing each other the following evening time. Anyway, go Leafs go.